Well, Eric pointed it out to me, and now it's bothering me, and along with the sunlight, it's bothering me. Here, you guys get the glare, not me. All right, so he just pointed out that I say button and curtain. Weird. Along with a few other ones, apparently Martins and all kinds of other stuff. So, counting them up as you're going through watching this. All right, see how many times I say curtain or button funny. Um, the wind has finally started dying down. We're only getting 20 to 40 mile an hour gusts now, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, see how many times. Comment down below, guys. Have fun watching this video. Take care. Hi, I'm Junior with Keystone RV Center. Today we're taking a look at the Flagstaff Superlight 27 BHWS. So that's the bunkhouse wardrobe slide. We're going to be going through this. We're going to be doing a quick demo. Um, one of our sales associates has sold this to a customer. Uh, I was fortunate enough to actually speak with this customer on the phone. He was pretty awesome. So I wanted to make sure we took the time to do the demo. You see me carrying this thing around and you're like, wow, what's that? We're upgrading technology. This is my new camera assistant. So I can click this to turn the camera on and off. So we're gonna go through this unit. We're starting on the inside today, not the outside, because I'm hoping the wind dies down a little bit between now and then. We'll see if it does. Um, but this is going to be going through and we are going to be touching base on a bunch of different aspects on how to operate this coach, both from the inside and the outside. Like I said, we're gonna start on the inside. So let's go ahead and start at the control panel. All right, so this is our main control panel. Now, the cool thing is this one's going to have the one control app. So you can go on to your app store, whether it's Apple or Android, and download the One Control app. If you have an iPhone, simply put it at the QR scan code, and it'll allow you to download. What it's going to allow you to do is control the switches that are rockers, okay? Now, like this switch, which is a hard switch, or this one, um, or any of these other blue ones, are not going to do any function off of the app, okay? So... That'll allow you to go through, turn these switches on and off, operate some of your slides, some of your awnings, things like that off of the controls. We do have an interior light switch, but on the lights themselves, they are going to have individual on off switches on each one. We do have the porch, the awning and the step lights, which are gonna control the things that are obviously labeled. Now we do have a slide control switch. You're gonna move this slide all the way in or out and we're gonna cover more about that. When you hear this noise, that means it's all the way out or all the way in. You do want to hear that noise. Nothing's going wrong. All that is is the torque setting on the motor saying, hey, I've reached my maximum extension. Now for the wardrobe slide, and we'll show you this here in a different shot, um, we're going to move that all the way in or all the way out. Okay, and We want that moving in one constant motion. We'll talk about the two different ones here in a second. Um, but you're going to continue to hold your finger on the switch after it stopped moving for a five count. Okay. The, or either way, either way works. So we're going to do that for a five count Our awnings. Unfortunately with the winds today, I'm not going to be put them out because two most common questions we get with our awnings. How much wind is too much wind? How much rain is too much rain? When you're asking that question, it's too much. At the end of the day, we haven't changed the laws of physics. It's a giant kite bolted to the side of our trailer. Don't leave it out. And you'll see guys go, well, I saw these guys with tie-down straps. Cool, great. You're making about a $3,500 wager on, on Mother Nature. I ain't willing to bet against her. Now, we do have a Wi-Fi switch down here. Let's talk about what that does while we're on the control panel. We're going to turn that on. Now, it does take a minute to boot up. I'm not sure the exact boot up time. What I always tell my customers, just give it five minutes. Five minutes has always been plenty enough time. It may do it in a lot less five minutes we know we're safe then we've got a control we got a little sticker right up here so what we're going to have on this sticker is the network we're going to connect to so we're going to go to whatever wi-fi device we're using go into our wi-fi settings and find this network it's then going to ask you for a password you're then going to put in that password once you've put in that password, you're going to open whatever web browser you're using on that mob mobile or laptop device, and then go ahead and type in this number, which is 10.176. It's labeled on there, but it's a weird number. You're going to punch that in, and it's going to look like another Wi-Fi setting um, where you're going to select whatever Wi-Fi you're going to try to use this system to amplify onto. So in this case, Keystone RV Center is going to be the Wi-Fi. We're going to go ahead and punch that up, and then it's going to ask for the password. We're going to punch that up. 
Um, and then that's going to allow the device to connect to that Wi-Fi to amplify it. Now let's talk about what it will and will not do. It will not turn dial-up internet into lightning speed connection. Okay, so if it was dial-up before, you still gonna have dial-up. You just gonna have better connection to dial-up. If you are at a nicer campsite that has good Wi-Fi strength, but maybe the signal's not perfect in your site, it's gonna help greatly for that. But in my personal case, like at my campground, they have a Comcast modem designed for 15 devices trying to power 300 campsites. Even with this device, it's not going to help me. Um, so just keep that in mind, it's not a miracle worker. Now let's talk about these blue switches. Let's talk about the sim simple one. We got a tank heater switch. What that is, is heating pads on the bottom of the holding tanks. Now let's talk about what they can and cannot do, okay? so. They are a 12 volt heating pad mounted on the outside of a plastic tank that won't melt through a plastic tank. So it's not the cheat code to go camping in zero degree weather. Keep in mind in the Northeast here, campgrounds are open usually from March till the first week or so of November. Um, once it starts getting too cold, they shut them down. So it's not really a huge deal for us, but we get those nights that get, you know, a little bit frosty. That is gonna help a little bit. We at Keystone RV Center is still going to say water freezes at 32 degrees. Anything below that is going to be your responsibility to take care of. Water pump. What's this do? So if we're going to a campsite that doesn't have full water hookup, or maybe we're boondocking, this is going to turn on to get pull water from my freshwater holding tank. And we'll show you where you fill that up outside. But it's going to pull water from the freshwater holding tank to pressurize the faucets. Now I have two more switches up here, water heater electric and water heater gas. So I've done a whole video on which one to use when, long story short, when I'm doing my dishes and everything like that, I'm gonna use the 110 volt electric, that's campground power, okay? If I'm not hooked up to a campground, my only option is going to be gas. But at the campground, by running this to go ahead and wash my dishes, wash my hands, stuff like that, I'm burning the campground's power, not my electricity. Now, when I switch over to the gas side, or I'm sorry, not switch over, run the gas side at the same time at the campground, that's going to change my output between 16 and a half and 17 and a half gallons is what they're, they're average, averaging between the different brands right now. Okay. That's going to give me a longer shower. So when I get out of the shower, I can go ahead and rock that off again, conserve my propane. Um, you know, if I make my wife mad in the morning, she usually waits till I get in the shower, then shuts it off. However you guys want to do it. Now, if you are running just the gas side of the hot water heater, when you initially fire it up, don't be surprised if you see this light come on right down here where it says DSI fault. That's direct spark ignition fault. What that means is I have asked the hot water for heater for heat, but it has not prepared heat for me yet. Okay, It hasn't prepared a flame for me yet. So we should see that go out within 90 seconds. If we do not, see it's already went out. If it does not go out, what I want you to do is shut it off go over to your stove, light your stove off, get all three burners going for a good five, 10 count that way. And that wiggling you're hearing is, or feeling is not the tripod moving, it's literally the wind moving the camper. That's why we're not putting the awnings out. Definitely too much wind. Um, so if it doesn't go out within the first 90 seconds, shut it off, light your stove off uh, for a good 10 count and then turn her back on. Anytime we're operating, I'm sorry, I'm gonna bounce out of screen. I am kneeling for this, um, and I did not bring knee pads to work. I don't know why. Should have thought about that. I was shooting videos today. Um, so, we've got battery switch over here, fresh tank, black, gray, gray too. So what do these all do? Well, by pressing in on the dip switch, it's going to allow me to see how much power I have in the battery, how much is in my fresh tank, how much is in my black tank, how much is in my gray tank or my secondary gray? Well, why is there two grays? Well, there's a set of axles between the kitchen and the bathroom and I can't make water flow up a hill. So that's why we've got that. Make sure I've covered everything on here. We talked about the interior switch, the port switch is all that stuff. Talked about the Wi-Fi. We're gonna talk more about the slide out here in a second. Uh, we got the awnings. We already talked about that a little bit. Um, water pump switch and the electric and gas side of the hot water heater. Let's get this camera rotated around and I'll show you the bedroom slide coming in. We'll talk about why that's slightly different than the primary slide here. All right. I don't have to be in every shot for it to be fun. So what we have here on this slide is two sets of gears 
on either side, okay? So there is a motor all the way at this top gear here, okay? And it has a secondary arm coming down to a secondary gear system down here. What that allows us to do is use one motor on one side, one motor on the opposite side, all the way on the other side of the slide, and a brain uh, in between the two to talk to each other to be able to track the slide's movement going out so we make sure that it stays nice and square going out. Now, the reason I tell you that I don't want you to uh, stop it halfway in between with this system is this system is smart, but it's not intelligent. So if I stop it halfway in between, it may lose count of where it was at. So anytime we're moving it, we're going to hit the slide out position and we're gonna allow that to move the whole way out after I see the slide stop making motion, I'm gonna to count to five to impress my wife, to show her that I can do it. No, two, three, four, five. So I know we're good, I go ahead and let off the switch. I'm gonna do the same process coming in with that um, to allow this system to make sure it's all the way in or out. You may see it jump a little bit, um, no big deal there. If we do end up having a, uh, setup where it does come in and it binds up or gets sideways on us the simple solution is simply continue to roll the slide in and out or you can jump on to Lippert's uh, website or their app get in contact with their technical support and be able to head and go through all that with them now whether we're talking about this slide or our bedroom slide we're gonna have three basic rules okay all the way in or all the way out. Now, I already told you I don't want this one stopping halfway in between. This is a rack and pinion design system. I don't mind this one stopping halfway in between, okay? But when it's halfway out, I don't want to be walking on it. When it's all the way in, I don't want to be walking on it. The only time I want to be putting pressure on this slide floor is when it's all the way in the out position, okay? Now, if I put this halfway out and I'm sitting in a rest area like this and it's pouring down rain, don't be surprised if water's getting in. Okay, which moves us to, op to maintenance part number two. There are rubber gaskets on these slides, on the sides, on the roof, that's going to keep water from coming in this unit. Okay, If you stop it halfway in between, they're not gonna seal. But maintaining them is also important. We have a video already done up on more in depth on the slides on showing you how to maintain it, what to use and everything like that. So be sure to check out that video um, a couple other people have, and it's a, it's a pretty popular one. And then uh, we're gonna also lubricate the gear system, both on this one, on the rack and pinion design, and on our Schwintech slide. Um, so you'll see in that video how we do it on a different Flagstaff. And then rule number three is on our roof, we wanna make sure the roof is clean coming in, the floor is clean coming in, and nothing's underneath if it to support the weight. So let's talk from the top down. So roof being clean. Um, this unit, uh, we don't want sticks, twigs, and everything else up there to tear up those rubber seals as we bring them in and out. Uh, we don't want anything on the floor. The reason being is I don't care how nice this linoleum floor is, if we put it up against a rock, it's going to lose that battle. And then number three, nothing underneath of these to support the weight. You'll see guys selling these jack stand looking things that go underneath the slide room to help support the weight of the slide. The problem with that is it doesn't help support the weight of the slide, it just kicks the slide out of square. Because you can imagine as the camper settles in the campsite, the slide's not gonna settle with it and it's gonna kick it out of square. So those are the three basic rules to the slide room. So let's continue to talk about a couple other things. We're gonna go over the fireplace and the stereo next um, and the television. And then we're gonna go over the refrigerator, moving on to the oven. Um, and then we're gonna talk about hot water, the, the sinks, uh, my opinion with sink drains and stuff like that. Um, and then we're gonna go over the tire pressure monitor and system, so stay tuned, there's a lot more coming. All right, so let's start with the fireplace. Cool thing with this, this does help keep the inside of this unit. Now, caution right off the bat. That being said, it will trick the thermostat into not heating which is how my underbelly gets the majority of its heat. Not off those tank heaters, but the furnace itself. So if it's getting cold, and then I say 40 degrees, when the temperature starts reading 40 and it's going down, I'm going to stop running the fireplace and start running the furnace. Now, we do have a tab up here at the top on the left. On the remote, that's gonna be Celsius and Fahrenheit. That's going to change what it displays as. 
um, whether it's Celsius or Fahrenheit, people who have landed on the moon, people who have not. Then we're going to have a power button that's going to do obviously power button stuff, turning the fireplace on and off. Then we got a little flame button that is going to change the brightness of the fireplace. We can actually shut the fireplace illumination off and still have it functioning as far as the um, the uh, the heat goes. The next thing is going to be a timer. That way I can set how long I want it to run for. And then I actually have an up and down arrow that's going to rotate up and down to set the temperature to whatever I want it. Um, it is going to throw a good amount of heat. And then I have duplicate buttons down here that I can change the color, change the brightness, change the thermostat, all that stuff right off of there. Now moving up, we're going to have a stereo. We do have an owner's manual in that, or we're going to get to the owner's manual packets here. Um, that'll go into a lot more in depth, but long story short, we have volume control here. We have the ability to scan one at a time, multiple at a time, you know, do the quick searches. Um, when you find a station you like, you can press and hold one. Uh, you have zone one, which is our main area, zone two, which is our bedroom and zone three, which is outside. There is a zone three setting where I can have the volume turned up on zone three. Come back in here into the main living area and turn it down. That way it's not blaring inside, but I can still hear it outside, which is an awesome little setup. Um, and then go ahead and switch over to different modes. We do have TV Audio 2. TV Audio 2 is where your TV is going to project its sound through. Now you do have a DVD player built in here as well, which you would go through the TV input selection, which is in the top right on this remote and select HDMI IR RV audio. That'll go over to our stereo there. Now, this TV is programmed for the local stations here. There is a TV antenna booster located to the right half of the te television, right down here, that is going to boost the digital TV signal that we are getting. If we are running off campground cables, shut that switch off. You'll know it's off because the green light will go out. But you have a menu button. You're gonna jump over to where it says channels. You're gonna jump down to where it says auto channel search. And you're gonna go ahead and perform an auto channel search by hitting the enter, selecting whether you want antenna or not, and go through and let it do its thing. Now while it's doing that, we can go ahead and talk about, we do have a pivoting aspect to this television. Um, we have additional HDMI slots on here that we can access. We have that TV antenna booster here that we can get to a little bit better. We have additional hookups for satellite over here and additional plugs if you wanted to run additional uh, electronic devices through this. And then she does press back and lock into place for travel down the road. So while that's finishing that up, since we already know what that looks like when it's finished, um, we're going to go ahead and jump over here and start talking about the kitchen as far as the refrigerator goes as far as the stove goes microwave things like that so let's start with the refrigerator this is a gas and electric refrigerator so we have an on off switch here in the top when i turn it on i get a little light inside that's going to show me that it's on and then i have another switch here that says auto or gas on auto it's going to look for 110 volt first if it cannot find it will automatically switch over to lp gas okay so if this unit became disconnected power it would automatically start firing up and again make sure that we've ran our stove and we don't have any air in the lines if you get a light over here that starts flashing check that means there's a propane issue typically um, or it's flashing a code to you so if you're getting that the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I got 110 power if I don't have campground power and I'm running on gas I'm going to shut this off light my stove and then turn her back on this has a triple relight sequence, much like our hot water heater and our furnace, okay? Which means it'll light itself, and then if it gets itself blown out by the wind, not like we have wind enough to move a camper right now, so yeah, it could get blown out by the wind, um, then it's going to automatically relight itself up to three times. 
to go ahead and try to keep it running. After the third time, it will send it into fault mode or check mode. Um, and you can just shut it off. If you've already been running your stove, just turn it right back on. It should be ready to rock and roll. Now, water filter, okay? Does have onboard water filter on this system, and we'll talk more about that here in a second, as well as a water filter wrench to access that. We'll show you that when we get over there. Um, that's going to allow you to put the onboard water filter on if you prefer it. Um, some people do, some people don't. It's a personal preference. We're not gonna get into that. So, next thing. You got four of these mounts. Fridge door's trying to attack me. You got toilet paper mount. You got a towel bar mount. And you got the mounting brackets for that. My opinion with that is use it a few times first before you start mounting everything. Everybody wants to get it home mounted. And then we get them back in and it's got like six different holes in it from where they put the toilet paper. So use it a couple of times, see where you're gonna like it, and then go with that. It does come with the bottle opener, which is also attached to a spatula. Perfect setup. Thank you, Forest River, for that. And you have some coax cable for an outdoor television hookup, and we'll go over more about that later as well. If we can get outside and the microphone's going to be able to pick us up that's going to be a big question. So, next thing we're going to talk about is our stove top, and then we'll talk about our sink and stuff like that next. Hey, I don't have to walk over to the camera anymore. All right, so this is our stove top. We got a light switch, fan switch, and then we lift up, fold back onto itself, and then back again to give us the ability to access our stove. This is designed for countertop space, not for cooking. Believe it or not, that happens more than you think. So, to operate our stove, we have a sparker over here, and then we have three knobs labeled for which burner they're gonna control in the oven. So, to light these, we're just gonna rotate it up behind, and then we'll spark them over and light them. To do our oven, we can do the same thing, but I prefer using a stick lighter to warm up the burner itself, because otherwise you're gonna sit there for an extended period of time trying to light it. Flagstaffs are awesome in the fact that they do put a knife rack in behind here to store our knives. The reason you saw that pause there was because I didn't tell you, uh, wait till the stove top's cool enough to close because you don't want to close that onto a hot surface. It's not going to work out well. We also have a light switch over here that will illuminate just the knobs themselves, or I can illuminate the oven in here as well, or back to the middle for off. Microwave does microwave stuff. If you haven't watched our other video on how we set up at a campground, save yourself some time in life. Everybody goes to put a minute and a half, one, three, zero. You're pressing an extra number. Just press nine, zero, and start. And she's up and running for a minute and a half. Alrighty, guys. Let's continue to move around here. We're going to talk about the sink, in my opinions, with this stuff, as well as the tire pressure monitoring system. And I just made fun of myself last shot, so let's try it again. We got technology. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is our tire pressure monitoring system, which we've done a video on how to program. This one's already been programmed. So let's talk about what this kit all includes. If I can get it out. Maybe it would have been smart to set it up ahead of time, but oh well. It's got a windshield mount if you prefer to mount it that way. So all you do is take the back, clip it in, and then mount this to your windshield. It's got adjustment nuts on here so you can actually change what angle it's at in a couple of different ways. My preferred method is actually this guy. This guy got, drops right inside of there, holds it very nicely, and you can see we're measuring at 61 degrees and 63 for our tire temperature and it'll cycle through. When you initially power it on, it does take a minute for them to connect. So just keep that in mind. Um, you'll see that once we finish the sync demo, we'll be able to go over that more. Um, it does hold a charge on its own, doesn't need the power cable. I've ran it for well over six hours, uh, going up to upstate New York with one. Um, had no issues, I was at two thirds of the battery and I don't know where that two thirds was, it was literally where it was at when it came out of the box. Um, has a little USB cable, has a 12 volt charger on it. Um, I have no idea whether that's in camera or not. Then it's got some stickers with it and then most importantly 
the owner's manual, and I'm gonna pack all this up nicely in a drawer. Um, so this owner's manual is gonna walk you through the process. So long story short, that unit will start alarming if the tire pressure goes, because of the way we programmed it, 10% below, 25% above, or 158 degrees um, for tire temperature. So you can buy additional ones. So if you have a boat trailer, they make submergible ones. They make other waterproof ones that aren't submergible that just screw onto caps, or like this one, which is a band mount system that goes on the inside of the uh, on the inside of the rim. Um, so we can monitor everything. Now, let's talk sinks and stuff. All right. So first and foremost, I'm not a huge fan of sink covers in place during transit. Um, on this floor plan, I would put them underneath the bunk beds. Reason being is I prefer my sink drains upside down, my sink covers clear. That way, whenever the water, if the water gets turned on while I'm driving down the road, it's got somewhere to go and it's not running all over my countertop, ruining the inside of my camper. It's just an ounce of prevention. Um, so the sink covers do work. Oh, get yourself a silver Sharpie because you can use these as cutting boards. So I'd like write meat on one side and then on the other side, I'd go ahead and write fruits and vegetables. And I don't know how much bread cutting you do, but I think that's, is it, maybe that's designed so I can cut my bread for an appropriate size slice. You think that's what, I don't think that's what it's for, but I'm gonna try to use it for next time. So sink drains upside down, that way again during transit, it's got somewhere to go. We can move this up and down. And then on the back side here, we do got a sprayer. Y'all been around in the world long enough to know how the sprayer works. You can see, got them little touch lights there um, throughout the unit. So our tire pressures are now all reading, it looks like. All but one. We got 59, 64, 63, 65. So they're all picking up now, which is awesome. We'll send the driver down the road with that. Um, so he'll be able to keep an eye safely on his tires without having to check them constantly. Let's pack these away and let's start talking about owner's manuals and stuff. Well, we're gonna try this angle. We're gonna see how it works. At least try something new, right? All right, so we got our windshield mount, our charger, and our cable all inside of there. And then this is our LP gas line for our outside stove top, um, which I don't know whether we're gonna be able to get to. On the bottom side of the trailer, because I mean, that wind is literally, I, I don't think I'm gonna get any kind of quality audio out of it. We do have a on off valve here. Now you can see this thing moves and this is gonna look just like the one that's on the RV. This is the off position, whichever way that ball valve is facing on the inside, that's the way it works. But I can't connect it when it's open. The reason for that is I don't want to burn myself with propane or freeze. I don't know which is the right one. Comment down below if you know the correct technical term. I know what I use, it's called ouch. Okay, so that guy's right inside of there. Next one down, we're gonna have Bracket feet for the television, so if you want to put those back on for some reason, you can. Bracket for the television on the outside. And then owner's manual packs for all the owner's manuals that came in this unit. We're going to pull that off to the side for a second. Now, what it does not have, I'll we'll put this TST tire pressure stuff in here. Oh, and the sticker. What it does not have is a generalized owner's RV manual. The reason being is Forest River has actually improved a lot. So instead of printing one owner's manual for every single trailer that they build, now what they do is they have an app-based system that you go online, pull up your year, pull up the app on either Google or Apple App Store, or you can go to Forest River's website if you don't have a smartphone um, or smart tablet. Download the app, and then you'll go in, select year, make, model, and it will download that owner's manual for you um, make sure you have that on hand that is an awesome feature now the thing i set aside one of the things i like about the flagstaff line every model number and serial number to every single appliance put inside this coach that is an awesome little setup they give us so we're going to pack all that up and then this drawer is just an open drawer and then this drawer is just a soap drawer here then we got our two tabs here that we can put our table on in fact or extension rotate the camera you can see where those two locking tabs and adjustable foot would connect things like that all right so let's talk about the converter 
All right, so this is our converter, okay? I'm doing some interesting yoga poses for this video, I'm telling you that much. So you're gonna notice we have 110 volt breakers and we have 12 volt fuses. They're gonna be labeled on what controls what. So treat it just like you would a house or a car. Check the breakers, check the fuses if you have issues with it. Now, I don't know if the noise is coming through the camera or not, but you'll hear a little bit of humming from here. Why? Because at the end of the day, what the converter does is take the power from the campground, drops it down to 12 volt to charge the battery, and then runs it through the fuse panel there. So when we take, a, take that kind of power and drop it down to 12 volt, we're going to end up creating heat. We gotta get rid of that heat somehow. So the converter has a built-in fan. That's gonna give us a little bit of humming throughout. And the way you open and close it is by simply pressing on the top center here to open and lock it. Now this little device off to the side here, is that in frame? Yeah, it's in frame. That little device off to the side here, what that is, is going to be our LP carbon monoxide leak gas detector. So if you hear it going off, treat it like an actual emergency, get out of the camper. Check it at least twice a year. Try checking it more if you want, just like you would a smoke detector. Now there are no batteries to change its direct wire to our camper, which brings us to our next point. If you leave your camper hooked up and don't use the battery disconnect located underneath the propane tanks, the front of the trailer, then don't be surprised if three to five days after owning or less, that thing starts making a lot of noise like it's trying to back up. If it starts doing that, simply turn off, the, turn off the battery disconnect or get power to charge the unit. It's going off and warning us that it's got an L, it's low on power and the LP detector is no longer gonna be working. So now that we've talked about that, let's continue to move around and try to find some other things to talk about that maybe doesn't have me on the ground. Well, it's slightly more comfortable, but I'm still doing half about half sit on the side of the wall here to try to get everything in shot. And the really goofy thing is when I first tried this, I was like, oh no, the forward facing camera has all the numbers backwards. Technology is smart. Whenever it, you look at the sample afterwards, it's fine. So this is our thermostat, okay? Now this is a single zone system way it's set up right now, but it's prepped for a second AC and we'll talk more about that later. So we have a mode button, which we could switch between the heat of the, the gas heat off which you wouldn't want to do, or just gas heat. You know, I can turn my thermostat up and that will start running my furnace on the gas, okay? Then you also have system. System off, system cool, okay? Now we can use our mode button to scroll through what kind of cooling setup we want. So basically now we have it running on the roof unit. We have cool high, which once it gets temperature, it will shut the compressor off, but continue to run the cycling fan. Cool low, I prefer high. There's a chance that you can ice up an AC unit if not enough air is flowing over the fins. I've talked to a lot of people in the industry. They're a lot smarter than me when it comes to this stuff and their response is, well, just don't run it on low and you never have the problem. Cool, I won't run it on low. Or I can have auto. So once it gets temperature, it's gonna shut everything off both the cycling fan and the compressor, obviously. And then we got just fan high. Now fan high is going to be just running the fan, okay? No compressor, no AC aspect to it. Um, and then you got fan low and we're back to off. Now, if this unit was wired up for a second AC, I could hit zone, it would go into the second zone, but since it's not wired with one right now, it's not sensing anything, it's not gonna let me mess with it. So that's the long and the short of the way the AC system is going to function in this. And then let's see if we can do this smoothly. If it was wired, oh man, this would have been a lot nicer. No, not really. All right, if it was wired for a solar panel, that's where that would be there. Uh, the controls for that. If we get one in with a solar panel, we'll go ahead and go through that. So let's talk about the AC quick. I'm gonna flip around over to the AC, try to go through the maintenance processes of that. All right, and we're back talking AC still. AC on the roof. Okay, so let's go over what an AC does and does not do. What an AC is designed to do is to remove heat from air. This applies whether it's in your car, your home, or your RV, okay? So it doesn't actually produce cold air, it removes heat from air, which is one of the reasons I don't want these dump fins open for a long period of time. And by a long period of time, I don't want them open for about more than five or 10 minutes max. 
Reason being is I'm pushing cold air out, pulling cold air in, what heat's left to pull out? With them in the closed position, it forces the AC through the ductwork and then goes to the extremities, bringing the warm air back to the middle, bringing it up here and getting rid of that hot air, okay? Other than the salesman in the RV right now. Now, so that's the first thing to know about an AC. Second thing to know about an AC, we get this call every July, every August, and it's frustrating for the customer. And I feel bad on our part. So this happens. This is the normal way the phone call goes. Hey, I got to my campsite at one. It was 120 degrees. Three hours later, it's only 90. What's wrong? And the simple answer is nothing. An AC's benchmark for what's working on most models is going to be roughly 10 degrees per hour. So if it dropped 30 degrees in three hours, that's about normal. These are not magical devices, okay? Laws of physics apply to them. So if you get to the campsite and you know you're going to get there on a sweltering hot day at one o'clock and the inside of the camper is going to be like your car at one o'clock in the middle of a parking lot that sat there for the last six hours of your road trip, you got to give it a minute to work. So have a backup plan ready to go. So have the swimming suits already in a bag up in the front storage compartment or in the truck, um, money to go down and hang out at Lazy River, whatever. But we're going to want to make sure that we are aware that's something that can happen and it's normal. Okay. So we do have filters on here as well. The third thing we're going to talk about with the AC, if I can actually get these out. Oh, see? All right, so AC filters, they are free to wash. They're about $15 to replace. And understand that I'm quoting this at one point in time, and I used to be able to buy a sheet of plywood for less than $90. All right, they keep going up. All right, so these are cheap to replace, okay? ACs, at this current time, we're about $1,500, okay, or more. So, you can kind of see where I'm going here. Free to wash them. How often should I wash them? I personally, after, on Sunday evening, when I'm packing my camper up, pull these out, turn the faucet on, and the last little bit of water that's in the lines, I'll rinse these off with, because I'll already have disconnected, I'll have a little bit of water in there, I can relieve the pressure, clean that up. Now, I'm not a smart individual. Ask Eric, he'll tell you, okay? I'm pretty dumb. So I'll take this whole kitchen caboodle, throw it in my sink. Why? I got a big giant hole up there. We'll do it both sides, all right? See, show you how smart I am. There we go. Rinse them off, toss them in my sink, drove home, got to the house. When I go to get back in the camper, I got a giant hole in my ceiling that doesn't look normal. I need to do something before I fire it up. So that's when I go back over to my sink. These should be nice and dry by then. I will take them, slide them in. Each side. And then I can operate this AC like normal. So that's what I do with that. You got another method that works for you and you're able to remember it, do it. I didn't say mine was the only way of doing it. I just said that's how I do it. All right, so we've talked about the AC. I'm gonna go over a couple other things, and then we're gonna to get to the thing that everybody loves to talk about, the toilet. So got our another new toy that we've got going on here. So I'm trying to use this little gyro thing that uh, somebody said was awesome. We'll see whether it is. So our lights, remember we have the one switch to control all of them, but I can control this main ceiling light off of that and then come over here and we got these lights forward facing camera is interesting so press once and it get press once and it gives me a blue light okay but then how do i get mine to go off of that press and hold boom okay so you can either have blue or you can have the uh white light and then we have a USB slot here on the front that allows it. Now we also are going to have our windows that are going to crank straight out. Really not loving this design. We're going to try it, see what we think about it. And then 
I feel like everything is like double backwards on this thing. We got our shades here that we can pull down. One, two, two shades. But the only exception to that is that window over there. Notice that one actually lifts straight up, not pulls straight down. That way, I'm closing that, it's way too windy. That way, if we're bringing the uh, slide in and we left that window open, we don't have to worry about anything there. Now, we already talked about having a LP detector. Hey, I'm over here. Computer, track me. There we go. So we already talked about having an LP detector. I'm getting motion sickness from this. I think this will be the last time we're using this smart thing. So we're also gonna have a smoke detector up there. And we also have a fire extinguisher located. You can't move that fast with it apparently. You're also going to have a fire extinguisher located down here by the door. So those are gonna be those couple of things. We have a crank up roof vent here in the main living area with no roof vent cover on it. And then in here in the bedroom, we're gonna have a crank up roof vent with a max air fan cover on it. So I can run this one or the bathroom one going down the road. There's how much wind's coming in. Overpowering the fan even. One, two, three, four. And that will run to draw heat out of the unit. Now the cool thing is with that fan going on going down the road, then we're able to uh, get some of that heat out of this unit as it is in transit. I don't have to worry about that. So that is a nice little additional feature there. Again, you have a secondary one in the bathroom. I'm going to go ahead and get this thing back on the tripod. And we're going to go over the bathroom and we're going to talk about a couple of things in there. This thing is really weird. I got to play with this more. Eric, I need paid time off to just sit at home and try to play with the new camera equipment. I'm learning everything. All right, so there's not enough room in the shower for me to get a tripod in here and talk about everything. So let's talk about what this shower water miser is. Um, now, I already did a video on this once, but we're gonna go over it again. So this valve here allows you to change the water from coming out down the shower hose, divert it back into the fresh tank. So if you're dry camping and you're trying to get this water warmed up, so your shower is in uh, freezing cold when you jump in, we have the valve in that position, turn it on. And as the water warms up, this is gonna go from blue to white. You'll actually see it change to white colors. That way you know the water's warm. You haven't wasted any of the water going down the drain. Um, all you've done is recycled it back into your fresh tank. You do not wanna use this when you are hooked up to city water because you're gonna be filling your fresh tank as you use it. Then once it's time to rock and roll, you would flip the valve um, again. Great for dry campers, awesome little smart design they've come up with there. So, go ahead, shut that off, and then let's go over here, and we're gonna talk about the toilet. Yeah, see if we can get everything in here. All right, so. You have a foot valve right down here. When we press this guy, Part of the way it fills, pressure all the way it empties. So, what are we doing there? Well, first off, this is a water jet where the water is going to be coming out of. I want you to imagine a line about an inch down below that, and I want you to bring it up to that line four times, okay, prior to your first camping trip and every time you empty the sewage tank after that. Um, the reason being, well, actually, let's put this on the tripod and we'll talk about that a little bit more. We'll talk about the whole toilet setup. All right, so why do we fill the toilet after emptying the holding tank just to take it home and park it in the backyard? So what I want you to imagine, a piece of toilet paper stuck to the side of that tank, okay? Sitting in the backyard, middle of July, there's 140 degrees in that tank. That toilet paper is going to turn to rock hard cement, not going to go anywhere and it's going to crud up those sensors. We keep the inside of the tank wet, that helps with that process. Now, if you remember, we also had a black tank monitoring system. The other thing I don't want to do is empty the sewage tank unless it's two-thirds of the tank full. 
that may, may mean I have to stand on the foot pedal of the toilet and just rapid fill that tank. The reason I want to get that tank full is the additional water velocity to help rinse everything out. So if we're only on, gone for a day or two, we may not reach that two thirds of a tank. If you're gone for a week, you'll probably be fine. You'll probably actually hit it before then. The reason, the next thing we want to do is when we uh, fill that tank the fourth time, I want to add toilet chemicals. I don't care what brand you pick. Aquachem, Odorless, there's a ton of brands out there, okay? Pick one and stay with it because chemicals mess with each other. Um, I'm literally laughing picturing the, the camera blowing across as we're trying to do this outside filming, but we're going to see what we can get done. So pick a brand and stick with it. Chemicals mix with each other and don't like each other and may cancel each other out. If you mix a chemical with an enzyme, it's going to kill it. Enzyme versus enzymes, they usually don't, they're not compatible. So pick a brand and stay loyal to it. Whatever is going to be easiest for you to get. In our other videos, we recommend Aquachem. Simple reason being is it's available nationwide at Walmart. This trailer, oh my God, I can't believe how windy it is. I wish it was not this windy so we could do this outside demo. So that being said, the next thing is with everybody in that's watching this video, I think you've at least had one opportunity in life to go to a porta potty, okay? An outhouse, all right? Simply put, okay, was it ever the liquid at the top? Nope, all right. And yours isn't special, all right? So what we're going to do is if we go number one, we're gonna flush down what happened and fill it up to that line. Remember that line's one inch below those jets, roughly. Okay, you ain't gonna tape measure out, roughly. Okay, fill it up to that line once for a number one. If we go number two, we're gonna flush down what happened, fill it up to the line twice. What we're trying to do is dilute the solid to liquid ratio. The more water we have in there, the better off we are. Um, we're gonna create less issues later on. Um, nobody has ever brought a tank, uh, tank into a uh, service department with the issue of I was using too much clean water with my sewage tank and it created a problem. Now, let's talk about things that should go down a toilet. An RV toilet, body waste, and RV toilet paper only. If you choose to put something other than RV toilet paper down there, it's not my arm that has to go up the chute to fix the problem. Okay, and I said chute there. I don't know if I uh, got that diagram correctly or dialogue correctly but you're gonna go have to go up that chute to collect whatever's clogging it it's not a fun process that valve has to be open to do so and whatever was blocked behind it all right is coming out right behind the toilet paper great now that we've done that none of you are going to be looking for cheaper alternatives i don't care where you buy the toilet paper from but stop reading these online forums that said well i read that you could use this brand I talked to somebody at the campground and they said they could use this brand. That's right. Cousin Eddie was able to use that brand and for 20 years he's never had a problem. You're not Cousin Eddie. You're Clark, okay? You will have the bad luck Cousin Eddie avoids at all times. So only good hardworking people end up getting that problem. So please, please, please stay away from those brands. Not every time we see a problem, but it's enough that, that we bring it up. So stay with RV toilet paper. So. Four fills and toilet chemicals prior to the first camping trip of the season and after every time you empty the sewage tank. Number two, uh, and, and stay with a brand of chemicals, okay? Next one, we're going to be talking about flush down what happened and fill up to the line once for a number one, flush down what happened and fill up to the line twice for a number two. And number three rule is going to be, no, there's not a number three. The third rule is going to be Make sure that we're dropping RV toilet paper and human body waste down there only, nothing else. So let's move on. Actually, we're sitting here. We got a foot rest on either side, closest to the outside armrest is going to be those recliners. And then storage inside of here with USB and 110 and more storage over here. That was an awkward transition. So, anything else we need to talk about over here before I get up and start moving? Nope. All right, let's keep rolling around. So, we got our bunk mattress here that we can flip up. And out of the way. And then we can rock that up. 
we have large access for storage. Keep in mind, you should have the slide in when you're loading this for storage. We also have USB in one time. The reason you want the slide in for that is so you make sure that it's going to close because when you jam the kayak in here, it fits with the uh, slide open, it may not fit with it closed. Um, we have USB and 110 as well as our little light system right there. And then up above, we're going to have just lighting up there. We have windows both top and bottom. Um, let's continue to move around, see if we can finish up this coach quickly. And I only say quickly because I know the transport driver is waiting on us at this point. So we've got TV backers for here. We've got our cable and US or 110 hookups there. We're gonna have 110 and USB over here. And then we're going to have 110 and USB on that side, his and her reading lights, as well as jump over here to this pantry. Motion sensor light inside this pantry. So the two position is motion sensor. The one is constant on and the middle is off. I know these aren't that close. These aren't that good. All right. So aside from that, I think we're done inside and I don't think I have any chance of doing the outside. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in and for our friend that purchased this and is transported here halfway across the country. Thank you so much for trusting us. We really do appreciate your business. I'm glad I could make this video for you. You have my number. If you need me, please call me. Have a great day. Take care. The wind has been blowing so bad today that with the gap in Eric's teeth, when he walks, it whistles.